Hi, this is the AI Storyteller. I'm Mark. This issue, we bring you a review of the short story collection Miguel Street by Nobel Prize winning author Naipaul. Naipaul, an Indian descendant British writer, has been honored with both the Booker Prize and the Nobel Prize in Literature. His literary journey is marked by two distinct features a complex immigrant background and the exploration of both fiction and nonfiction realms. Let's start with Naipaul's immigrant background. He was born in 1932 in a small town on the British colonial island of Trinidad. Trinidad is located in the southern Caribbean region of Central America, with its capital being Port of Spain. Naipaul's grandfather came from India and immigrated here for a better life. His family faced economic hardships, and later they moved to Port of Spain, where Naipaul spent his adolescence. Naipaul's cultural background is more intricate than that of the typical immigrant writer. During his youth, he lived in three different cultural atmospheres. Firstly, there was the traditional Indian culture within the local Indian immigrant community, where they frequently staged plays based on the Indian epic Ramayana. This left Naipaul with his initial impressions of Indian culture and history. Secondly, there was the realm of British literary classics. Naipaul's father was a literature enthusiast, and he often narrated the works of literary giants like Shakespeare and Dickens. It was under his father's influence that Naipaul embarked on his literary path. Lastly, there was the local culture of Trinidad, where Naipaul only sensed poverty and backwardness during his childhood, prompting him to aspire to leave the place. It wasn't until the early 1960s, when Naipaul, now a somewhat renowned writer, revisited his homeland, that he confronted its culture and history for the first time, realizing the severe damage caused by colonialism. At the age of 18, Naipaul obtained a government scholarship to study in the UK, and Oxford University became the starting point of his new life. There, he received formal training in English literature, as well as enlightenment in Western culture and values. After graduating, Naipaul settled in London, working for the BBC while continuing his writing. During this period, he produced the works that are now found in Miguel Street. Not just limited to Miguel Street, Naipaul's early works were all set in the Indian immigrant communities of the Caribbean region. The people and things he once wanted to escape from during his youth became the very sources of inspiration that nourished his literary creations, as if life was playing a kind joke on him. After completing several prolific early works, Naipaul encountered a creative block. It seemed that the experiences he had accumulated during his youth had been depleted, and he started searching for a new creative path. In 1960, at the invitation of the Prime Minister of Trinidad, Naipaul wrote a travelogue about the Caribbean region, titled The Middle Passage. Its publication not only helped him overcome the brief creative block but also opened up new horizons for his works in the realm of nonfiction. Speaking of Naipaul's nonfiction works, we cannot overlook his India trilogy, comprising an area of darkness, India, a wounded civilization, and India, a million mutinies now. The India trilogy is Naipaul's most renowned nonfiction work, where he focuses on the interplay between local culture, history, and contemporary reality in India. He also attempts to reveal the underlying reasons behind the current challenges faced by these regions. If you are interested, you can listen to An Area of Darkness and in India, a wounded civilization covered in previous editions. Now, let's delve into Miguel Street. In this work, Naipaul creates a fictional Indian immigrant community called Miguel Street, comprising 17 short stories. Each story is concise, using refined language and a touch of comedy, yet underneath lies a prevailing sense of melancholy. In literary history, there have been precedents of authors, like Naipaul, setting a series of short stories within the same time and space. For instance, Irish writer James Joyce did it with Dubliners. However, what sets Naipaul apart is that his characters traverse different stories, becoming both the protagonists of their own tales and passers-by in others. The characters are diverse, ranging from men to women, from the obese to the skinny, from the young to the old. Yet, the underlying theme remains singular. In Miguel Street, beautiful things fade away, and people ultimately achieve nothing. Beyond these characters, there is a storyteller within the novel, also a member of Miguel Street, living alongside other characters. 
as he narrates the stories, he gradually matures, and eventually, in the novel's conclusion, he shares his own story with the readers. So, while the book may appear to tell the stories of Miguel Street, it actually narrates the tale of this storyteller, I. Through this approach, Naipaul achieves a literary revival of his own youth. When Naipaul wrote Miguel Street, he was not yet thirty years old. How did the young Naipaul view the place and people he once lived with? Did his perspective change compared to his later years? These questions can be explored within the novel. As a reminder, today's analysis is based on the translation by Zhejiang Literary Publishing House. The first story in Miguel Street is titled Bogart, where Bogart is the nickname of the protagonist, inspired by a tough character from the movie Casablanca. Bogart's defining characteristic is silence, as being talkative and having a tough image don't go hand in hand. He was also known as the poker-playing man, as he spent his days silently playing with poker cards. To the narrator I, Bogart is the most uninteresting person on Miguel Street, without a doubt. One day, Bogart suddenly disappeared, and nobody knew where he had gone, but no one really cared. After several months had passed, people almost forgot about him when Bogart suddenly returned. This trick happened twice more, and each time he came back, Bogart became more talkative and cheerful than usual. Shortly after his last return, the police on the street arrested him for bigamy. As it turned out, Bogart disappeared because he couldn't bear the life on Miguel Street. It left him feeling frustrated. Just think, if a place can make a person who spends all day in silence, playing with poker cards, feel miserable, it must be awful. After leaving Miguel Street, Bogart went to other places and got married and had children with more than one person. However, it remains puzzling why, despite being disheartened by life on Miguel Street, he still chose to return. In response to this question, another character in the book explains that Bogart came back to be with his brothers on the street. In the end, leaving physically might be easy, but breaking free from Miguel Street's influence mentally is incredibly difficult. In this place, people get assimilated by the environment, becoming despondent, lethargic, and losing their sense of purpose, making it hard to embark on new lives or new paths personal willpower and self-determination seem to have little sway in Bogart's story. But what about the others? Let's continue reading to find out. Two stories depict a father and son whose lives have spiraled out of control. The father, George, is the most fearsome person on the street, a complete villain. He drinks heavily, abuses his family, and ended up killing his wife in a fit of rage. After his wife's death, George started abusing his daughter, making her work as a servant in his brothel. Eventually, the brothel closed down, and his daughter ran away from home, while his son, Elias, only returned to look at George's funeral. Compared to the protagonists of other stories, George never entertained the idea of changing his life. He let alcohol dictate his existence. In this sense, he epitomizes the typical Miguel Street character. His son, Elias, is entirely different. From a young age, Elias was polite, studious, and aspired to become a doctor and leave Miguel Street. However, no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't get into medical school and had to settle for trying to become a health inspector but he failed the exam three years in a row and ended up becoming a garbage truck driver. The most poignant aspect of Elias's story is that if the most diligent and hardworking person on Miguel Street couldn't alter his fate through his own efforts, then what hope do others have? So, although George and Elias, this father and son, display contrasting behaviors, they are both individuals unable to control their own lives. One of the stories features a poet named Blake Hazelwood, in his youth, he had a lover who adored flowers and plants. Unfortunately, she died during a difficult childbirth, and after her death, the poet never trimmed his own yard again. He set a goal to write one line of poetry each month, intending to compile them into the greatest poem over twenty-two years. However, on his deathbed, he confessed to the narrator, I, that the story of his lover was a lie, and the greatest poem didn't exist. The narrator I received his emotional education through the poet and learned to perceive daily life with poetic eyes. However, the poet's death served as a declaration that Miguel Street couldn't accommodate poetry. Instead, it was a place of harsh reality 
and challenging lives. This story stands out uniquely within the entire collection, with the protagonist different from the typical Miguel Street residence, as he never actually lived on that street. Yet, as we mentioned earlier, this work is both related to Miguel Street and connected to the narrator I. The poet's story inspired I to develop a distinct understanding of Miguel Street, reality, and life becoming a crucial part of I's growth and paving the way for his eventual departure from Miguel Street. If the poet attempted to soften the rough life with poetry, Bigfoot used camouflage as his strength. Bigfoot was an orphan, adopted by a policeman who educated him in a brutal manner, shaping his principle of solving problems through violence. On Miguel Street, when it came to courage and brutality, Bigfoot ranked second to none. Fighting became his signature, and the only thing he excelled at, but his facade crumbled when the narrator I discovered his fear of dogs. Moreover, he publicly burst into tears after losing a boxing match. Consequently, Bigfoot lost his standing on the street and left to seek a new life. This demonstrates that in the face of the monstrous beast called life, either poetry nor violence proved to be its match. On Miguel Street, besides Bigfoot, others also chose to disguise themselves, like Laura. However, unlike Bigfoot, Laura feigned optimism. Laura had eight children with seven men, brimming with passion and friendliness, yet keeping the hardships of life buried within herself. People on Miguel Street said she spent all her time giving birth and seducing men, feeling sorry for her, but she seemed unaffected. One day, her eldest daughter revealed her pregnancy to Laura, and at that moment, Laura realized her daughter was following her path causing her to break down in tears. It was the first time people on the street heard Laura cry, and it was the first time they knew her true attitude toward life on Miguel Street. Later, her daughter committed suicide by jumping into the sea, and Laura merely uttered, It's better this way. When people see death as an escape, they must be utterly disappointed with life. And Laura was one such person. While narrating these stories, Naipaul deliberately made a pause, Summarizing Miguel Street in one sentence. If a stranger drove through Miguel Street, he could only say, Slum. But we who lived here saw it as our world. This world is not a beautiful one and cannot accommodate beautiful things. Those who try to bring about change or resist it all fail. The protagonist of the story, the Pyrotechnician, is Majorin, who also faced failure. He was a Pyrotechnician, afraid of his wife, and had ten children. Madrin had two main hobbies, making people laugh and studying fireworks. However, the people on the street neither appreciated his jokes nor his fireworks. The only time he succeeded in making people laugh was when his affair was exposed, and his wife beat him, making him the street's biggest joke. In the eyes of the people on Miguel Street, having an affair was one thing, but getting beaten by his wife was utterly embarrassing. However, Naipaul did not portray Madrin as a mere clown or simply criticize him. In reality, Naipaul had a profound sympathy for the people on the street, attributing their quirks, confusion, failures, and moral decline to the environment and the ruptures in history and culture. Although the latter two points may sound abstract, they are genuine realities for Indian immigrants living in the Caribbean. They struggle to integrate into the local history and reality while being detached from their inherent Indian cultural roots, leaving them in a state of rootlessness. In such a state, it is difficult to establish human dignity and worth. Thus, in Majoran's story, he continuously yearns for respect and recognition, but the only time his fireworks were appreciated was when he accidentally burned down his own house. Naipaul's arrangement reveals the underlying sadness behind the comedic aspect. In Miguel Street, survival is easy, but living with dignity is challenging. Eddowes is one of the individuals striving to live with dignity. He works in the most looked-down-upon job on the street a garbage truck driver yet he is the most neatly dressed and presentable person on the street. In traditional Indian society, there is a caste system that divides people into different hierarchies, ranging from Brahmins, Kshatriyas, Vaishyas, and Shudras. Beyond these four categories, there is another group known as Dalits or Untouchables, who hold the lowest social status and are relegated to menial tasks such as sweeping garbage. Eddowes and his family were born into this group. In the book, 
There is a detail where the narrator I is sweeping the sidewalk in front of his house when the garbage truck driver, Eddowes, takes the broom away, saying that I doesn't know how to sweep, as it is his job. Eddowes does not do this to uphold the traditional Indian caste system. On the contrary, he wants to express his disdain for it. If only untouchables are supposed to sweep garbage, he wants to show them that it is a skilled job, not something anyone can do. This reflects Edo's determination to maintain his dignity, as evident in how he dresses neatly and presentably every day. In Miguel Street, most of the traditional Indian social concepts and values have already disintegrated. Otherwise, the narrator I, who was born into the Brahmin caste, would never have been sent to sweep the sidewalks. However, these values still subconsciously influence the people on the street. For instance, when Edo says that a girl is pregnant with his child, people don't believe it. However, when he brings the child to the street, they say the child is too beautiful to be Edo's. Nevertheless, they genuinely feel happy for him and come forward to help and care for the child. Behind their contradictory attitudes and actions lies the conflict between virtue and prejudice. Influenced by the traditional caste system, they believe that people from the lower castes are naturally inferior and cannot have lovers or children. However, they genuinely consider Edo's as part of the street and willingly help and care for him. This reflects that Miguel Street, as an Indian immigrant community, has seen its old values disintegrate, but new values have not yet been established. As a result, the people living here cannot find the basis and criteria for their behavior and are forced to waver between customs and instincts, leading to various misfortunes. After this, we will see two brothers with very different attitudes towards life. Edward longs for an American-style life. He gives up his hobbies, distances himself from his companions on the street, works for Americans, socializes with them, and even marries a white woman. However, he cannot become an American, and his relationship with his wife is loveless. Eventually, disillusioned, Edward leaves the place. On the other hand, his brother Hat is a defender of Miguel Street. He is the central figure on the street, enjoying gambling, raising dogs, and walking birds. He is friendly to children and well-liked among adults. Hat is the most carefree and present-oriented person on Miguel Street. However, a woman changes his destiny. Hat, though seemingly carefree and unrestrained, also desires a family life. One day, he brings home a woman named Dolly, whom he likes very much. Although he acts coldly towards Dolly in front of others, he secretly gives her many gifts. However, Dolly runs away with these gifts and is found with another man. In a fit of anger, Hat injures Dolly severely, leading to him being imprisoned for three years. Edward and Hat have very different attitudes towards Miguel Street, but their life goals are actually not that different. Both of them desire a relatively stable family life and have experienced betrayal from their respective partners. This shows that in Miguel Street, different paths often lead to the same outcome, which is called failure. The year Hat is released from prison, the narrator I who tells the stories of Miguel Street has just turned 18. In I's eyes, Hat has lost his former charm, and conversing with him becomes dull. I is becoming an adult, and Miguel Street is no longer the entire world to him. Therefore, the last story of the novel is left to the narrator himself, titled Farewell to Miguel Street. As he grows older, I becomes wilder, drinking, partying, and living an idle life. At this rate, I's fate will be no different from the other people on the street. In his view, it's not my fault, it's Trinidad's fault. What else can people do here except drink? This line serves as the thematic point of the entire novel illustrating that people in Miguel Street will ultimately achieve nothing, and personal willpower has no influence here. Tradition, customs, and the environment are the forces that dominate everything. In the end, the mother secures a government scholarship for I through bribery and sends him on a plane to the UK. Formally, the departure of I at the end of the novel echoes the return of Bogart at the beginning. Naipaul seems to suggest that I will have a destiny entirely opposite to Bogart's which is both a consolation to himself and a blessing to the departing Caribbean people. At the same time, it answers the question we left earlier, how the young Naipaul views the place and people he once lived with. When writing this work, 
Naipaul believed that the only way out for the people of Miguel Street was to leave, both physically and spiritually. Having understood the content of Miguel Street, let's move on to Naipaul's writing style. Naipaul is exceptionally skilled in using his powers of observation and perception, which is evident in both his fiction and non-fiction works. His early fiction masterfully deals with his Caribbean experiences, vividly and accurately depicting the survival difficulties faced by Indian immigrants in a new environment. From the plot of Miguel Street, we can see that the characters on this street are diverse and each character is not elaborated upon extensively, yet a few strokes are enough to outline vivid images. For example, in the story of Edo's, the garbage truck driver, Naipaul uses only details like dressing and sweeping to address the problem of cultural transformation in the Indian immigrant community in the new environment, portraying the impact of the traditional caste system on people's minds in this new setting. Similarly, fiction like A Bend in the River, set in Africa, also draws on Naipaul's close observations of Africa. His non-fiction works are also based on extensive field research of his subjects. In terms of form, Naipaul used 17 short stories to depict the survival conditions of people on Miguel Street. This form was not his invention, but he introduced a narrator with autobiographical elements in the novel. As the novel progresses, the emotions, character, and thoughts of this narrator undergo changes. Therefore, the entire novel constitutes a contrast between the static Miguel Street and the dynamic eye. Besides portraying the various lives of the people on the street, Naipaul also wanted to depict the transformation of I. Such a writing style was rarely attempted in previous short story creations. With concise writing and comedic descriptions, Naipaul presented these 17 stories with underlying bitterness and sorrow, demonstrating his mature technique, which is why the New York Times once praised him as the foremost living writer in terms of talent and ability. Finally, let's talk about the themes of Miguel Street. As mentioned earlier, the overall theme of the novel can be summarized in one sentence. In Miguel Street, beautiful things will all fade away, and people will ultimately achieve nothing. No matter how hard individuals try, they will find it challenging to change this outcome. However, this is only the view of the young Naipaul. As his thinking matured, his stance also changed, and he later leaned more towards considering personal willpower and self-choice as decisive forces beyond the environment. Following this shift in perspective, let's explore the controversies surrounding Naipaul in academia. As we know, Naipaul's cultural background is more complex than that of the typical immigrant writer. He is of Indian descent but from Trinidad and received formal literary and intellectual training in the UK. Therefore, his process of seeking self-identity was quite convoluted. The controversies surrounding Naipaul mainly revolve around his immigrant background, focusing on his non-fiction works and ultimately discussing his identity and cultural standpoint. Currently, there are two main perspectives in academia. One viewpoint believes that Naipaul never managed to escape the feeling of cultural rootlessness and, in cultural terms, is a global citizen. The other viewpoint argues that Naipaul ultimately embraced Western ideas and values, and his observations of India, the Caribbean, and Africa carried a clear Western-centric standpoint. Western centrism, also known as Eurocentrism, posits that European civilization is the most advanced and exemplary in the world. Considering Naipaul's immigrant background, this perspective essentially accuses him of betraying his bloodline and origin. However, the Nobel Prize in Literature awarded to Naipaul contradicts these claims. The Nobel citation specifically mentioned that Naipaul integrated insightful narratives with an independent examination of the world, urging us to confront the suppressed and concealed histories. This evaluation not only praises Naipaul but also addresses criticisms accusing him of holding a Western-centric standpoint. In addition to his Western-centric tendencies, the conservative elements in Naipaul's cultural standpoint have also attracted criticism. As his thinking matured, Especially in his later years, he believed that individual freedom required individual willpower and autonomy of choice, and therefore, everyone must take responsibility for their actions. This perspective has irked some critics who argue that many people in the third world have no choice at all. Their history and culture have been largely destroyed by colonialism, 
and expecting them to transform their traditional thinking to adapt to contemporary life is nothing short of a pipe dream. Without external assistance, they cannot break free from their survival environment or achieve so-called individual freedom. Such debates have been ongoing for a long time and will likely continue. Knight Paul's value lies in his courage and commitment to uphold an unpopular stance. Moreover, he has transformed this stance into a source of moral strength in his works, forming his unique personal perspective. With this, we have covered the essential contents of Miguel Street. Finally, let's recap the key points from this discussion. 1. Nye Paul's immigrant background is complex, representing a common cultural phenomenon of the separation of bloodline, culture, and nationality in contemporary society. 2. Nye Paul has achieved great success in both fiction and non-fiction domains. His works encompass diverse backgrounds, including the Caribbean, India, Africa, and the UK. 3. Miguel Street is Nye Paul's short story collection with autobiographical elements, effectively his debut work. The stories are succinctly written, and behind the comedic narratives lies a core of sorrow, reflecting the young Nye Paul's sympathy and moral concern for the Indo-Caribbean people. 4. In academia, there are two main perspectives on Nye Paul's identity. One argues that he has not found his cultural roots and is a global citizen while the other suggests that Nye Paul eventually embraced Western culture and values. Well, that concludes the content for this episode. If you enjoyed my video, please click like, subscribe to my channel, and share it with your friends. Thank you.